Hi everyone, welcome back to Novel Nomad and welcome to what I am doing as my, not mid-year book freakout tag, but it's more as a mid-year check-in. Um, this is because I announced at the start of the year that I was going to be participating in the Women's Reading Challenge for 2020. And after that, whilst I have been reading some of the books, I haven't really been checking in with everyone to share the books that I have been reading for the challenge and to share some amazing female writers that I have been reading. And so today I just really wanted to do a check-in to see what challenges I have actually completed in the year so far and what challenges I am definitely going to be reading in the next few months. So let's start off. First off we're going to be starting with challenge number four which is to read a picture books by a person of colour and I read Maxine Benneba Clark's uh, two picture books, I think she's got three, but I read her one which is called The Patchwork Bike which is from from a short story from The Foreign Soil, which is absolutely beautiful. And also I read her Fashionista, which she actually illustrated herself. And that was just really lovely. I borrowed them from the library and they were really, really wonderful. So if you're in Australia, I do highly recommend. Um, it's a really lovely um, children's stories that one's talking about wearing whatever you want to wear and how you want to feel that day and how you want to express yourself. That's Fashionista. And Patchwork Bike is just about the child's imagination to create something amazing from something that seems so ordinary. Next was uh, challenge nine which was to read a book that included folklore and I well for part of the FEMS group we read The Trial of Lightning by uh, Rebecca Roanhorse and this was actually really fabulous it's a really interesting urban fantasy set in like a near future post-apocalyptic environmental apocalypse um, and it's set on the American continent and the First Nations people have basically carved themselves a huge block of land in the middle of this completely eroding world that's been completely destroyed and um, they have in doing so they basically brought back the um, First Nation gods back into existence so they're very much present in this it's not so much like American gods where they walk among everyone um, but it is really fascinating to read this and it was so interesting to have a urban fantasy with a very heavy First Nations American setting and it was really really interesting in their different roles that they had and also major kick-ass female main character so that was really fun too Challenge number 14 was to read a book set in Japan and written by a Japanese author and that was Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. Uh, this was really fascinating. It's a dark humour piece on modern society um, about a woman who really needs structure to understand how society works so she finds her most comfort in the convenience store where they have very strict guidelines of how to act and respond and um, what is needed to make the store function and so she can she can access that level of clarity but she can't understand what is needed to make a human being function in the greatest society. It's just a really fascinating book. I did do a mini review of this one so I'll link that down below. So challenge number 16 was to read a book featuring a woman with a disability and that was a book club read again. It was A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmer and it was um, the main character. She actually had cerebral palsy. And it didn't mainly feature as a huge part of the book. It didn't wasn't the defining factor of the book. So it was really, really fascinating to have um, the main character having cerebral palsy, but still having the adventure and all the fun that she did in a YA novel. Number 19 is a book that is frequently recommended to you, and that was The Lost Flowers of Alice Hart. I don't have my copy. It's currently out with a friend. Um, but that one by Holly Ringland uh, was recommended to me by a lovely bookstagram community in Australia and it's just such a wonderful story about a woman who's trying to find her place within her family history and within her own desires and wants so it was just such a beautiful one and the use of flower language of flowers in it is stunning Number 20 I decided this after because it's a book that is a feel-good read and that is definitely for me uh, the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. I just felt so wonderfully enamoured of this book and of these characters and of this writer. Um, unfortunately, uh, Marianne Schaefer, who originally wrote it, she passed away and her niece um, Annie Barrows edited the book afterwards. But it was just such a beautiful story that I thoroughly enjoyed. And I did also do a mini review for this one for Quarantine-a-thon. 
Challenge number 22 is to read a new to you or a favourite publisher and for me that is definitely going to be Check Please. Uh, they are published by First Second which they publish amazing, absolutely amazing um, graphic novels. So Check Please is by Ngozi Ukazu and just such a beautiful gorgeous story following Eric Bittle as he goes to university for the first time. It's the first time away from home and try to really discover himself because he's finally coming out as gay um, and he's going into ice hockey and he loves to bake but he wants to be purely and 100% himself and he does manage to be that within this community that he establishes and it's just so beautiful and it is very romantic it's very very beautiful so I highly recommend but if you do have read these ones and you want other recommendations by female authors I will give them to you so you've got uh, Jen Wang's The Prince and the Dressmaker and also Tilly Walden's On a Sunbeam by First and Second. So they're both amazing, amazing graphic novels as well that I highly recommend. So let's go into the books that I am excited to read to help finish off my challenge for the second half of 2020. Now starting off we've got Gin Patrol on the Purple Line by Deepa Anapara and this one is going to be really fascinating. This is the art copy but this one um, is to fit for challenge number one which is to read a book by an Indian or Caribbean author um, so yeah I definitely want to read this one it's kind of got a really interesting uh, kids kind of be Sherlock Holmesy vibe but um, the potential uh, jinn or a spiritual thief coming and uh, kidnapping kids as well and a crime novel all kind of mixed into one so that way this one sounds really fascinating and is definitely on my list for tw second half 2020 about the environment of which I will probably be um, featuring in my July uh, TBR is definitely going to be The Breath of Wales by Leigh Calvez. This was a wonderful present from my beautiful bestie Chloe and it's about the science and spirit of the Pacific Ocean Giants of which we both went on a holiday to Canada last year and got to see the beautiful humpback whales and the Yorkers as well so it's just a very personal book selection but it is about the environment and it's one that I def definitely want to read. I think I need some nature writing in my life right now. Challenge number five that I will definitely be reading or finishing off is See What You Made Me Do by Jess Hill. Um, this won the Stella Prize for 2020. Very exciting. Um, but what I love so much about this one was it's just addressing domestic violence within Australia and it's really pulling things out and really making people realize that certain behaviors that they take for granted every single day is actually quite detrimental to changing and actually addressing the problem. So I definitely want to finish this one. I got about about one third of the way through um, because Jess Hill was coming to Adelaide Writers Week and I didn't get to finish it off before I met her but I definitely want to do it now. Jumping down to challenge number seven and Afrofuturism is definitely going to be um, N.K. Jemison's The Obelisk Gate. I read book one, loved it, did not see that twist coming. Oh my goodness. Um, but yes, Obelisk Gate is book two in the series. I have book three ready to go and I definitely want to finish this because it just blew my brain with how amazing the first book was. Challenge number eight is an anthology by multiple authors and this one was quite hard because I was trying to find a multiple authors that were all women and I ended up choosing uh, Wave Me Goodbye Stories from the Second World War edited by Anne Boston and published by none other than Virago Press and uh, this is beautiful because it's actually all stories, short stories that were written by women during World War II or just afterwards and it's just actually given women's voice to the war as well because obviously everyone knows the military side of the war and that was very prevalent after the war as well trying to get those experiences written down but also to have a women's experience of the war is integral so this collection definitely spoke to me challenge 11 and 17 of which is to read a book and then watch the movie adaption and 17 being a book that is over 500 pages long and I've decided to go the whole hog why not and read a book that is over 1000 pages long and that is none other than Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clarke. I have already seen the TV show for this one and loved it. I have had this on my shelf for a ridiculously long time and never got around to it because it is monolithic. I think I'm going to set this one aside for August. I'm going to focus primarily on getting this one finished as my August TBR but I'm very excited to hopefully finally get this off my TBR shelf this year. 
I have two options for challenge number 13. Uh, one is Disoriental by Nagar Javadi, um, and this is actually, she is challenge number, sorry, challenge number 13 is to read a book by an Arab woman. And um, Nagar Javadi, she uh, grew up in Iran and then escaped um, to Paris with her family on horseback, which was stunning. Um, and then also White Tears, Brown Scars by Ruby Hamad. Ruby Hamad was born in Lebanon, but grew up in Australia. So there's two options that I'm weighing up on potentially reading. This one is actually translated fiction as well, translated from French. So I'm not sure, but this is also incredibly powerful, very relevant to the current scene, but they're both very good options. I have already completed challenge number 23 multiple times, which is to read a book by an LGBTQ plus author. Um, and, um, but I always think, why not read another one? And I have Kings, Queens and in Inbetweens by Tanya Buteju. This is what I got when I was in Canada last year. Tanya is actually a First Nations writer in Canada, lives in um, unceded territories in Vancouver. So it's very, very local to where I we were traveling at the time. And I definitely wanted to get a YA LGBTQ representative novel by an own voice and First Nations voice. So it's a fantastic, fantastic diverse author to have on my shelf. And I definitely want to get onto my red shelf. And lastly, for the bonus read of a reading of Toni Morrison or Elizabeth Allendale, and I have chosen Toni Morrison. I have my copy of Be Beloved. I've had it for a while. I probably should definitely have already read this one, but I'm going to have it on my TBR for this year. But like I said, I'm probably going to be starting with the nature writing. I feel very in need of some nature writing right now. And then a random selection from any of the above. So thank you so much for joining me. Let me know if you're participating in the Reading Women's Challenge for 2020 and what your selections are for any of the challenges. So thank you all for listening and I'll see you next time. Bye.